misunderstanding of what matriarchy is is skewed or clouded by the realization of the patriarchy we've been living under. So they tried to f form a patriarchal government that Enlil wanted to implement on the earth because he thought that the Y chromosome was superior to mitochondria. Little did his dumb ass know, as Anu told him, until you understand mitochondrial, you will never understand the woman's right to inherit where she's organic to. So he wanted to push this patriarchal agenda because he believed that the male gods were the superior gods which gave us um, gender wars, uh, uncivil war, as my sister Susie B. wrote in a book called Uncivil War about the conflict of the male and the female in the so-called, as they like to call us, African American or black community. So, we know that patriarchy is primarily male dictatorship in the home. And under the um, patriarchy, um, we believe erroneously that matriarchy is just take do the same thing the patriarch's doing with women in the lead. Well, that's not going to work because that's not what matriarchy is. That's feminism. Feminism was designed uh, to always keep the patriarchs coming back to power by keeping women powerless. That's not matriarchy. And the power in the matriarchy is in the children. And the mothers or the women job is to nurture the children and to be um, their first teachers. Then the father <clears throat> or the male role is to protect. So you look at it first. Before we modernize the understanding, first we have to look at it from uh, a more primitive standpoint, um, like primal human existence. So if we didn't have technology <clears throat> and we were operating our clans matriarchally with no technology, what would that look like? Right, let me put my, my blunt down for a minute. Give me a little sip. We, we about to we about to uh, take off like my uh, like my man uh, Uriel, the flight boss. We, we finna take off like the flight boss, bitch, up in this motherfucker. But let me give you something to drink first. All right, this is what we do know in modern times. We know this. The system, the police and the courts have been weaponized against fathers by women who didn't have the interest of the children in their in heart, but instead had a selfish agenda to um, use the system as a weapon. So they taught the certain women to weaponize the system in order to subjugate the man and prevent him from being able to have extended families. So, the side of the police car in almost every city you go in, you see the sign on the side of it say, to serve and protect, right? That's my guy, flight boss, bitch. Um, serve and protect. What the fuck do that mean? Because all we get as far as service and protection is brutalization and death. So, that can't be what true serve and protect mean. So, if the court system and the police system has been weaponized to um, remove fathers and make them incompetent or inept in the home, what this does, in effect, is it raises the children to all be um, uh, drones, feminine drones, even if they male they will still be a feminine drone because they don't have no balancing mechanism to feed off of. There's no masculine energy that's showing them how to um, harness that energy, control that energy, focus that energy, and utilize that energy to serve the family and protect. Right? So, um, the women are 
our first line of defense against child traffickers and pedophiles. But when they give the call, the men supposed to be Johnny on the fucking spot right there. If that don't have to be your woman and your child, when she give the order under matriarchy, she called the distress call, the SOS, then the men, wherever you at, if you a man and you got testicles with testosterone pumping through your blood, you supposed to stop everything that's moving until we understand that this woman and this children is safe. <clears throat> now, in the era we in, the men walk past a woman watching her child be abducted out of her arms by a, uh, a stranger, and she's screaming for help, and we just look. We don't go over there and say, hey, hey, hold up, hold up. Somebody got to sort this shit out. Somebody going to have to call somebody parent and tell me what the fuck going on. I need to know who child this is and why y'all struggling for this child. But no, we're not going to do that. In modern times, because we in this uh, secret squirrel culture, everybody want to act like they don't see children being traumatized. People see it. I remember being a little boy and seeing adults abuse children and other adults turn the other head like they don't see that shit under the matriarchy the first understanding between the man and the woman is we adults it's about the babies that's the first understanding so your adult grown folks bullshit at this point won't have any sway in the relationship if it's not in the best interest of the child because the man going to do what's in the best interest of the child or children. And the female, the woman, going to do what's in the best interest of the children. And then from that point, they can pair up their um, their job roles. They functions as parents, uncles, aunties, cousins, big brothers, big sisters. You can now balance the effort out so that nobody is taking anything personal. It's about the children. When you make it about an adult, then you make it about an agenda, a dictator, a patriarch. That's what the whole system is about. The adults running the shit the way they see fit and not being properly educated to run a goddamn thing. We talk about raising the matriarchy and restoring balance back to the earth. The earth families are disrupted. So, um, for those who are familiar with Madame Blavatsky, she wrote several key works. She wrote Isis Unveiled and she wrote The Secret Doctrine. Those are some pretty, what they call, weighty tomes to peruse through. That means them some big-ass books to read. So, and she talked about what's called root races. And then she mentioned something called Sybils. And then she mentioned something called, um, um, she mentioned civils, she mentions the uh, root races, and then she mentions the um, ancient form of Atlantean government. She talked about some of it. And you find bits and pieces <clears throat> of the legend of Atlantis being ran by a group of elders. And the group of elders is male and female. And anybody who um, born a leadership position, if they wise and they're not looking to be a tyrant, you got to have people that show elders that's going to say, no, young man, or in my case, no, you old ass nigga, sit your ass down and don't push that goddamn nuke button and blow off the fucking map. And then I'm going to be like, well, they threatening to push the nuke button and blow us off the map. And then Big Mama going to say, well, have you ever had a conversation with that motherfucker? Because he might not be a bad person, but he might have heard some bad shit about you that ain't true. So you should probably go have a conversation before y'all get to pushing all these goddamn buttons unnecessarily willy-nilly. Right? So then I say, okay, Big Mama, I'll go call this motherfucker. So I go into my office and I pick up my red phone and say, Hey, um, give me that farting ass president over there in Russia. He be pooping all the time. Listening to the shit he's saying, and if it makes sense, I'm going to be like, hey man, that makes sense. 
And if it don't make sense, I'm be like, that don't make sense. Let's try this. But if you got yes man around you, right? Motherfucking ass kissers. Everything you want to do, they go along and get along ass. Boot licking brown nose, motherfucking no spine having jellyfish motherfuckers up under you. Then you don't got nobody holding you accountable. That's not a wise position to be in in government. And this is the reason why. Um, power corrupts. Absolute power corrupts absolutely so when you pick a council of elders you pick a council of elders knowing that if you about to do some dumb shit that's going to affect the majority of the people they going to take your ass out of power um by vote because you're doing dumb shit the first rule is don't do dumb shit right in modern society for we teach the children doing dumb shit is anything that's going to get you locked up Beat the fuck up or rape. If any one of them things going to happen to you as man, don't do that dumb ass shit. Right? So, um, we do find out that motherfuckers punch motherfuckers in the mouth for running their mouth. Um, motherfuckers punch motherfuckers in their eyes for looking over the fence. Right? Motherfuckers get chopped in the throat and punched in the mouth for talking on another person's business with no, um, with no authorization or justification, right? So that's why I say sometimes in order for you to do the right thing, you got to punch a motherfucker in the face. It don't mean you mad. It don't mean that you angry. It don't mean that you out for revenge. It just means, oh, we don't want to do that. So we teach the children to perform or to pursue their best life option. What do you want to be when you grow up was a question they used to ask us when we was little children. And then we would tell them, I want to be a fireman. I want to be the police. I want to be the ambulance driver. I'm going to be a doctor. I want to be the lawyer. And then the adults don't do shit to facilitate the fervor of the youth and their desire to pursue their goals. Instead, they just listen to them and go on about their day as business as usual. So, example of how things is, how things would be different under the matriarchy. My nephew called me up. He's a Muslim. And he has a son that's brilliant who wants to be a doctor. I sent him my personal medical dictionary and my personal Merck manual of medications. If by the time he's 18, he's assimilated the words in the dictionary and the medicines in the uh, Merck manual, he's about 70% of the way to being a doctor. Now he just need on the, the hands-on instructions from the instructor, and he will be at the top of his class. The side effect of giving an eight-year-old a medical dictionary that wants to be a doctor is it keeps his interest in the field that he wants to pursue. The second side effect of giving him that amount of information is it bends the mind into a superior stretch that allows them to incorporate other forms of knowledge easier than had they not been exposed to higher levels of knowledge at an earlier age. And so um, my nephew asked me, he said, I got the books. Um, my sister had gave him the books. He said, I got the books. Mama gave me the books. But what am I supposed to do with him? I said, give him to him. And let me explain to him why I sent them to him and what they for. And if he can understand why I sent them and what they for, they his books. Keep them in his room. He, can, he don't have to be in them books all day, every day. But he could pick a word here and there. He got plenty of time to assimilate a couple thousand medical terms that will have him speaking medicalese. Um, fluently by the time he's 18. If he know the language, he can learn the hands-on craft in a matter of a couple of years. Doogie motherfucking Hauser, motherfucking child MD. That's what you're trying to raise. The same would have been, let's say he would have been wanting to be a lawyer. I would have sent him my Black's Law Dictionary, my Bouvier Law Dictionary, and I would have sent him a Constitution a declaration of independence because that's what we was under at that time but those would be enough to teach him legalese 
So by the time he get to be an adult, he know what the lawyer's saying better than most adults that don't know nothing about what's what the law say. See, see, this is why we get why 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 we are behind educationally. Our high school seniors curriculum is fourth grade Japanese curriculum. I think it's like sixth grade Chinese level curriculum, and it's like fifth or sixth grade English or European curriculum. So why does our curriculum of seniors have us at an educational level of a child in junior high school? It doesn't make sense unless there's an agenda attached to it. If there's an agenda attached to it, it makes perfect sense. Part of our job as fathers in, in the matriarchy, we would be asking the women about the school issues and working on solutions to build the motherfucking football field, put up the goddamn lights, um, build the motherfucking parking lot because they didn't have one, build a training track for the, for the um, driver's education. That's the men's job. We're supposed to figure that out when the women that's teaching the children express the needs of the children. But now we're at a point where the children needs are so neglected that we don't know we have to start with a mass program of children redevelopment using principles of childhood development um, the, the doctrines that we are using in the training center, our rights of passage program for the boys is the um, Nathan and Julia Hare um, uh, Hockey Matt Hubuti um, we using Amos Ian Wilson um, we are also using um, the FOI military uh, drill format. We using the Tai Chi Xuan from China, and we are also using um, Qigong. Right, so we implement these in the early training of the children, the boys, so that they can start off self-discipline. So we don't have to discipline them. The problem, the reason we have to spank children. It's because we never teach them how to do self-control by giving them organized things to do. So part of the problem was that the people was educating our children took us out of what was called step-down education. Step-down education was critical because the 18-year-olds, the 17, 18, 19-year-olds taught 14, 15, 16-year-olds. The 14, 15, 16 year olds taught the 10, 11, 12, 13 year olds, right? All the way back to you have toddlers, right? This learning how to teach an infant, a newborn sign language off the step down method. You will have a communication network in the family where the children can express themselves at an earlier age where the adults actually know how to supply the actual needs of the child. This is how matriarchy differs. Patriarchy doesn't allow for that. It allows for military style regimented education um, in the box using the Pavlovian response system in order to um, um, program your child as opposed to teaching them to think. The report came back from the French Revolution that it was only a French Revolution because you had too many people that was capable of thinking for themselves. So how do you stop that? You have to teach a lesser form of education that doesn't rely on the individual to use thought, but instead it relies on the individual to use the ability to follow orders. The What comes out as look-see method in, um, in reading. Right, so you doing look see, monkey see, monkey do, copycat shit, but you're not learning nothing. All you doing is mimicking. You being a parrot, and you not being um, a thinker. You just regurgitating some shit. You don't understand the base meaning of it. So we start off under matriarchy. You start off where mothers are teaching children alphabet, and they read to them. 
And then from the alphabet, they teaching them phonics. This is a family activity when they trying to pronounce a word. You pronunciate a word. You go over the word with the child in order to perfect his diction. The better his diction is, the more powerful his speech is. So now his throat chakra is vibrating like a motherfucker at an early age. But be prepared for your child to call you on your bullshit. Because they came here to call all grown folks on their bullshit so that the grown folks can bump straight and clean this shit up before our other ancestors come back. Right? So we all come through this motherfucker one way or another to help each other. And when we take it as a selfish pursuit, we actually put more obstacles in our path than we move. So we have to look at it from a matriarchal viewpoint. If the children is in the middle, the women around the children and the men around the women. And if you motherfucking lose your motherfucking position and the guys on the side of you don't know it, you're going to pay for that motherfucking shit. Right? You can't be the motherfucking um, pariah in the family. So somebody in the family going to be appointed that can deal with your temperament without losing their cool to help you get your motherfucking mind right. See, the problem is we're not teaching enough children how to grow up with their mind right. So now we have to readjust adults. That's why we didn't have prisons before these people came, but now we need them. And I know we need them because I was in there and there's some motherfuckers thinking some shit that if they was on the streets doing the shit that they was goddamn thinking and I heard them motherfuckers thinking because that shit was disturbing to me. Right? So if it's disturbing to me, I can imagine if some of these goody two-shoe don't curse on the motherfucking live, motherfuckers would be that had a full-fledged heart attack and a stroke if they knew that that motherfucker was thinking that shit next to them. <clears throat> so, um, also in the patriarchy, you have the, the men clear the path for the women to come through. This is what we on right now. This educational campaign I'm on to crash course as many people into a format of self-thinking where you can deal with your own mind. The more people we get that can think freely and independently, um, the stronger our inner voice is and our inner communication with each other. As Buju Bantai once said, through that mystical communication within we keep on coming together. I love it to see when brothers and sisters is looking out for one another. See, that's them hills and valleys. So, if you realize life is a series of hills and valleys, and all hills and valleys is is highs and lows, right? So, if you can go low enough, by the time it comes time to go high, you're going to go higher than everybody else, right? So, you have to be willing to put yourself with your back against the wall in some harsh conditions to, for self-development unless somebody develops a program that would allow you to develop at what's called an accelerated rate. They got now um, what they call uh, mega math, mega reading, mega memory programs um, of varying different um, educational developments, all of these accelerated programs. The mega mind, mega math, mega reading is a copyright by uh, Kevin Trudeau and the authors he worked with, the one is for math, um, I think his name is something like Howard Steffenberg and the other one is for reading. And before they used to use what's called the Evelyn Woods crunch technique to learn speed reading. But now with modern inventions and computer technology, we can use computer games to teach you to speed read. Now, here's the thing about speed reading. If a person can speed read, they can consume more data faster than everybody else. Now, if you can convert the data into useful information by allowing it to digest in the mind what you read, and periodically review it mentally without referring to the book as much as possible, then you are reorganizing the mind to be able to read the signs of life in real time. Now, if you can take and learn, learn speed reading, and I teach you tarot, right, you see life as a 
moving tarot deck. Right? So all of the cards will be playing out in real time in front of your face and you will be able to avoid every obstacle. You'll be able to avoid every bad business deal and seize and capitalize on every great business deal. All of these things comes with training. How is the mind trained? So part of the father's job is to make sure that the mother have the resources to tend the home. Make sure that she have enough help to raise the children. If you are not capable of being there, you got to give her some help. One child is enough for one adult. And you got mothers out here raising 10 children by herself with no help. And we act like we don't see that shit. And by the time she get on her fourth and fifth child, nobody's going to want to marry her, but they're going to all still want to sleep with her because she's still gorgeous. And she keep popping out babies. But she got such a power in her mother energy, she's not going to stop. And that might be her motherfucking contract to come to this life and produce a high number of children.